Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the latter in its ST incarnation, but I actually played the Atari 8-bit version quite a bit back in the day. Uh, in fact, we've already seen the Atari 8-bit version in a very early episode of the Atari A to Z series, and in fact, we're going to see it once more this coming Saturday on the Atari A to Z flashback series in its Atari 5200 incarnation. Today we're looking at Final Legacy. The ST version of this came out in 1988, released through Atari, and it's another example of a formerly 8-bit game redeveloped for the 16-bit platform by Paradox Software. So the original version came out four years earlier in 1984 for Atari 8-bit, and the Atari 5200 version only existed in prototype form, but never officially came out until uh, sort of recent Atari Flashback Classics collections. Now, my past experience with Paradox's ports of Atari Classics suggests that this version is probably going to look a lot nicer than the original, hence it being on a, a more powerful platform, but it's probably not going to play quite as well, and it's definitely not going to sound as nice. Not that Final Legacy sounded particularly nice in the first place, but, uh, well. Let's go see, though. Let's see what a good job they did of it. Let's go play Final Legacy. Okay, here we are with Final Legacy for Atari ST. Um, developed by Paradox Software and published by Atari. As we can see, if we look at the About Final Legacy. ST version by Nikola... How have you pronounced that? I apologise. Not even going to try. Um, but yeah, looks like a, a one-man show in this one. Now, like uh, the previous Paradox Software title that we saw on this series, which was Missile Command from a while back, this is based around the gem interfaces uh, again. So we've got the sort of standard mouse cursor and drop-down menus at the top here, uh, rather than anything sort of custom that's been designed for this game. So um, if you've not seen the previous episode uh, on the Atari 8-bit version of this game, this is essentially a Cold War paranoia game. Uh, in which you captain a large ship called the Legacy and you are the last hope for humanity. So you have to go out and uh, destroy all the enemy's intercontinental ballistic missile sites. Oh. Stop with your demo. Get out of here. Um, right. L let's just start. So you have this overview map here and you have four different modes. First of which is navigation. So you move this circle here. The little black dot is you, and the circle around it is sort of the range of your weapons. So what you have to do is get these red dots in range, press the fire button, and switch to this mode, which is the sea to land E-beam. And using this, you have to destroy the missile sites. While listening to a rough approximation of the first five seconds of the Star Trek theme. Now, anytime you attack a base, the enemies will start firing missiles at your cities. So you then need to shoot them down. Using your lasers. And you go back to navigation and you continue. Until you have blown up all their missile sites. And you see down at the bottom of the screen, that's the, the time to impact is the time it will take for those missiles that have launched uh, to reach the cities. The cities in the original release of Final Legacy were all entirely fictional, sort of loosely based on um, real world cities. Um, but far enough away to be obviously fictional. In this one, we seem to have a bit of a mix of things. So we had we had Zagreb a little while ago, but then we also had Begin. So I don't know what that's supposed to be, but there you go. Oops, hold on. Now, in terms of execution, this is pretty similar to the Atari 8-bit version. But as I predicted in the intro, what we've got here is something that looks better, but sounds way worse. And sort of the overall handling of it is a bit more sluggish as well. So like sort of the speed that the grid moves on this screen, for example, and the Atari 8 bit is much smoother and more fluid.
But other than that, the, the sort of gameplay side of things is, is pretty true to the original. But I think on the whole, I actually prefer the more abstract presentation of the... Oh, oh I think we're being shot at. No, maybe not. Yeah, I think I actually prefer the more abstract presentation of the 8-bit original. It also moves a bit more smoothly as well. So, like, if you look at the, that torpedo sequence that we did there, the scrolling in... Now we're under attack. Yeah, the scrolling in this bit on the Atari 8-bit version was way, way, way smoother than this. Also, the missiles moved a lot faster. Yeah, this is pretty rough. Oh, and those explosions are nowhere near as good as the Atari 8-bit version. The Atari 8-bit version actually had the ship sort of shattering into pieces and sort of filling your entire screen with debris, and you've got a pathetic, weedy little explosion there. For shame, Paradox Software, for shame. God, and this music is awful, isn't it? I believe you can turn it off. Um, but I don't think you can do that in the middle of a game, unfortunately. Yeah, I also much prefer the laser sound from the original version as well. Oh, we've got a ship following us. Get out of here! Ow! There's another ship after me. And most importantly, the sky in the torpedo sequence does not have the birds flying in it. So therefore this is a vastly inferior port. Get out of here. Don't you shoot your silver diamonds at me. Yeah, that 3D effect on the sea is pretty rough as well. That was, again, much smoother on the 8-bit version. So yeah, I think we can confirm that this is yet another example of uh, the 16-bit version actually being inferior to the 8-bit version. Which always sort of gives me a, <laughs> a perverse sense of glee any time I encounter a case like that. There's this like, yes! The dear old Atari 8-bit still got it. There are still things it can do better. Well, no. The ST was capable of better than this. It's just that Paradox Software... Paradox Software were not... very good. <laughs> In fact, I, I've got this this version of Final Legacy here. It's from one of the automation... Um, pirate groups. Um, and the thing they say on the loading screen for this one is like, What's this? An almost good game from Paradox? Like they were a bit of a running joke after a certain point. If you remember back to the game called Haunted House that we saw ages ago on this series, that was Paradox Software. And as you may recall, you couldn't finish that game. So, uh, yeah, make of that what you will. Right, just one more base to go. And then we are home free. Time limit's a little bit tighter on this one because we're closer to the cities. There we go, all done. Not sure what the bonus is calculated on. I presume things like how much damage you took and that sort of thing and how many cities there are remaining. But that's it. Yes, you win a game of Final Legacy and that is your reward. You get it. bonus points according to your rank. And then game over.
So that's nice. Um, right, let's... Well, one... You can't turn the music off separately. You can just turn the sound off altogether. Let's have a quick go at the most difficult difficulty level and just see what a difference that makes. Right. Begin. Okay, first and most obvious thing, uh, you have much less fuel. And secondly, you'll see that there's only two uh, missile bases on the map. So what you have to do in this harder mode is you have to very quietly uh, sneak up on ships called intelligent ships and when you destroy one of those you will get the information as to where uh, another one of the bases is so it's a little bit more involved than the um, the basic difficulty but unfortunately from the map you have no idea which ships are the intelligent ships and which ones are the warships. So you just have to kind of go out there and look for trouble. Nothing there. Oh, another one in range. It's kind of weird. Turning the sound off has kept the explosion sounds, but none of the other sounds. <laughs> These ships are a lot more aggressive in this difficulty mode. I guess it makes sense, doesn't it? Take a lot more damage as well. There we go. Still pretty easy to destroy them though. And that explosion is still monumentally unsatisfying. Right, well, let's just head on over here. And first of all, take out these bazillion ships who are seemingly attacking us. The hunter over here. Oh, it's so nice to not be listening to that music anymore. You are down. Another hunter over there. Oh, the sluggish controls in this sequence. I mean, they they always were sluggish because, well, you you're piloting a ship, not a spaceship, not an aeroplane. You're piloting a large battle cruiser. The final hope of humanity, in fact. Come on, Hunter, where are you? There you are. Oh, a long range shot. This feels quite a bit easier than the 8 bit version. Um, I think because of that sluggishness. Yeah, this is really weird without the sounds. I don't know why you can't turn the music but not the sound effects off. It's like it, it'd be fine with just the sound effects, but with just a five second loop of the music going on, it's uh, mildly infuriating. But never mind. We're probably going to die soon anyway, so. Yeah, this is this is a competent port at best, I'd call it. Um, if you are desperate to play Final Legacy, and I do recommend that you do, because this is actually one of my favourite games from the 8-bit era, um, I do recommend playing the Atari 8-bit version or the Atari 5200 prototype, just because they, they don't look quite as nice as this. Although that's a matter of opinion. I actually think the C sequences look nicer in the 8-bit version. Um... Yeah, they just play and feel nicer. Right, we need to dock and get some fuel. Uh, oh, I, I think I, I just destroyed my own city um anyway i think that's probably as good a place as any to to leave that there so that was final legacy for atari st developed by paradox software and released by atari themselves so as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next time thanks for watching 
If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, MoeGamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today, and VideoPackGames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 Video Pack Computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.